Okay, so this video is on changing the inline fuel filter, which everybody knows is back in this hole here. So, I'm doing this because I got water in my fuel tank, water in my system, and um, the pump's still okay, so it still seems to be pumping, but I want to um, replace that fuel filter anyway. The way I checked the pump to see if it was working is I took the line off this end of the fuel filter, which is down in here, and it was still putting out a good amount of uh, liquid. It's just that most of it was water. So then I went back and drained the fuel tank uh, just to make sure. And so now it seems like the pump is putting just fuel through again, but I want to change that filter anyway. So since I already have one of the ends off, I'm going to get the other one. So the first end was fairly easy to get off because I have two 10-inch, actually this is a 8-inch and that's a 10-inch um, extensions. And if you put those in, you can get to the front of that fuel filter, the bolt, 17 millimeter bolt just by going directly in from the front of the engine this way with a swivel socket. I don't think you'd really need a swivel socket, but I used one anyway. And then the second one that's on the back, you can get to if you put a um, if you put a swivel socket down here on this end of it, and I got a Craftsman uh, ratchet on there, and then I'm going to put an extension bar on and break it loose there. So that's a pretty easy way to get it. It's just straight up from the firewall. Just about, um, not quite to the windshield wiper. Uh, about in line with the plenum, maybe. And then the one that actually holds the um, filter on, I'm going to try through the wheel well. Or maybe even right beside the wheel well here. I'll have to see. But again, I'll probably, I'm going to just keep building these. I, I got enough of these different sizes of extensions. I can just keep building different sizes up till I get one that I like. Okay, so um, that's what I'm doing. Uh, after I get this off, I gotta decide whether or not I want to use a real Toyota filter or a aftermarket Toyota filter. Okay, I'll uh, show you what um, this looks like when I get it off. Okay, so I've got the filter off, and amazingly, I thought I only had this truck for like 12 years, so I don't know who had it before me, but amazingly, it um, had a Napa gold filter on it. 34.97 is the number. 34.97, so I just went down to Napa and bought a new one. Uh, $23 for a new one, same number, made in China, so that's what they, at least 12 years it'll look like that, I don't know how long it's actually been in the car, um, these don't come with any plugs on the ends, also this one if I look in here, I can see this plate that's in here is back a ways from the, probably um, an inch, a little bit more back from the opening. And this old one, it, that plate is right up against the front of the opening, like sealing it off. So that could be one reason maybe the fuel wasn't coming through good, I don't know. Or else the fuel pushes in, let's see, which is out. Yeah, that's like a door, I guess, maybe. If that's the case, and this one here isn't sealed, though. If that's supposed to be shut, and it pushes against it, I don't know. Whoa, my camera's gone crazy. I'm going to have to turn it off here. And okay, so where did that go crazy at? I don't know. So inside of here is, like I was saying, the inside of this filter is... Um, this one's recessed in there. That plate inside, you can see, is recessed about an inch inside there. And it's the new filter, and that's the N. That's marked N. The old filter, 
that plate is right up against the end of the threads here. And I thought it was some type of um, trap door valve thing. So I don't know. Maybe that's the reason it wasn't getting much fuel. Because it just fell apart. Anyway, this new one, this um, 9497, it actually, it comes with four new copper washers. I noticed a lot of these that are for sale on eBay and stuff, they don't have four, they give you two. I don't know why they do that when a banjo bolt always requires four. So that was good. And then um, I bought a thing of heat. So uh, even though I drained all the water I could out of there, I'm going to run this through and see if I can get it out of the injectors. Um, and as far as taking it off, I did just the normal way. I jacked the car up and took the wheel off. I uh, used the, that's a 10 inch with a 4 inch, I think, extension with a flex on it to go in and get the bottom bolt. The top bolt I used a short, shorter extension, like an 8 inch and a flex, and came in through here because it wouldn't line up right from outside with the one I had. And the two ends I was able to get with long, ex normal way, long extension this way. And then, well, instead of an end wrench, I used a socket going down this way and worked it back and forth. So now I'm going to go ahead and, oh this is my uh, socket extension. If you ever can't find a piece of pipe, grab an old, one of your old clamps and use the pipe on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and see if I can get it back together, see if it will run. So I'm getting ready to put this back on. One other thing that probably should be said too is that when you put this back, mount it this way with this end towards the front of the car it seems counterintuitive because that's the end that's the end tube but the way the tubes are they'll they wrap off the inlet and come to this side and then the out tube goes that way back so because um, it's hard to put these bolts these little bolts in here you gotta fish them in there so make sure you're putting it in the right way when you put it in the first time so you don't have to redo it so one thing you might do is um, first just put on your inline, just don't tighten it all the way down, but just snug it down kind of, get it in where you want it, and then make sure you're not in behind any, looped behind any um, of these tubes or anything, and then take it, take the filter towards the back of the car and come up in the, come up around the, um, back of the starter. I don't know if you can see that or not. But come around towards the back of the starter and you can kind of hang on to the um, fuel line to get it in there. So got, I got to put the camera down to do it again. but um, And then uh, you can attach the other line before you actually get it bolted up on the other end you can put on the line on your other side once it's uh, over the top of the starter. Okay so now I have it over the top of the starter so now I'm going to put the line in uh, on the other side before I mount it up to the frame and um, that way I won't have to worry about trying to get the little washers on the end of this at the same time. Okay so now I have both of my um, supply tube and um, exit tube on the filter. They're just not snug down, torqued down. They're just on there. And now I can use the hoses to kind of help me move this around. And I can actually, I can get my hand down through here um, to hold it on this end actually. So I'm going to hold it on this end and then I'm going to reach around this side and I can feel where the bolt needs to start so that's the way I'm going to get the top of this started. So right there in the center where this light is you can see 
that's the bottom mount for the fuel filter and I have it what I have it pinned up on the top with a wood dowel so that bottom one is right in line now I'm going to stick the extension through with it line. so the easiest way I found to get that filter on there I took off the line that was on the back left the one that's on the front and I broke off a chopstick about two inches long and I pinned it up to the top hole died in position and pinned it with a chopstick and then I went through the fender well to the bottom with the extensions and tightened the bottom bolt and then went back up to the top and pulled the chopstick and stuck the bolt in there with an extension uh, 8 inch extension or 10 inch from this side on the top and that was quite a chore one thing I would recommend if you're going to do this job of changing your filter is that you have every possible swivel tool and extension ever made to try and get into some of those spots. Okay, so I got it all back together and bleated the um, bleated a couple of times at the um, cold start injector. And then next I'll try and start it, but at least now it's got a lot of fuel. It seems to have a lot of fuel pressure. I don't have a gauge. Um, one that I can put on here, so um, I'm going to Go ahead and try and start it, I think. The thing that's weird is I, um, I've been fighting this idle problem for a half a year and once I took the water out and changed the fuel filter, the idle is back to normal. It's idling, idling like at 7-800 now. And the um, idle control here works again. So apparently it wasn't electrical, it was something reading something with the computer or something. Another Toyota mystery. Mysteries of the 22 RE. So I'm kind of curious about this uh, Napa gold filter that came off here as to why this metal piece right inside here is flush up against the threads and on the new one it was recessed about an inch into the interior so um, I think I'm going to I'm going to take it apart I think and see take it apart and see um, just why it's doing that. If that's some type of valve that closes after the filter is um, used up, maybe. I can push it back in there, push it back inside, whatever it is. But I think I might figure out a way actually to open this filter up and see what's inside here. See, see the reason it does that. <laughs> 